what we did uh, in our last session is to we end up uh, we we talked about the horizontal alignment and we end up with a project which looks like this it was the last practice i hope you have it because it's very important because we want to continue from this point what we did here we load the text file of this point this point which i sent you it's called topo txt and seen the point and then we went to we inserted the block of a dwg of the these break lines here and you know what let me i like I, I give it this color so it would be in the background but maybe okay maybe now it's it's better let's take contours back okay so these break lines we entered it as a block we exploded it and then we use topography lines to filter to filter we use topography line to filter the break lines actually what we did we filtered the top t break lines layer into here and then we created the surface using the topography contours this is what we did i hope this is clear then what we did we created two alignments one you see there is an existing road here this one what i did i said let's expand this road make it wider so i started from the junction went along and created the use this line this line this tangent to this tangent connected this curve here in the center and then use the other road from here the regular polyline this is a new link between this existing road and this is existing road i hope this is clear i hope you got it and I hope you're in the same position because I want to continue my training from here. If for my understanding, uh, let's ask uh, Tamir. Tamir, any questions? Is what I've shown last time, is it clear? Do you have this surface? Tamir? If you want to speak up, you have to unmute yourself. Tamir is not with us. I asked him where is he? Adamo. Adamo, are you in this same position? Meaning you have the topography points, you have the contour lines. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So Tamir, we don't know, but with Adamo, we know. Uh, okay. Let me ask uh, Mr. Amir. Amir, do you have the surface? Is, that, is it okay? Not exactly. I. Uh... Can you? <laughs> Sorry? You don't have this surface, these contour lines? Mr. Amir? That's, that's uh, all I work uh, for. It. You don't have it. I have it, but okay. not uh, no. Okay, good. So if you, if you have it, it's very good. Thanks. By the way, again, I'm here to, 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 to convey my information, my knowledge. Any question, this is the time. Feel free to ask me. Believe me. Okay. 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 
All right, so I stopped with, we, we entered this horizontal alignment and then we went into vertical alignment. In the vertical alignment, what we did, in the vertical alignment, what we did, One second, I'm trying to move this so you can see. All right. This is the profile that we've done. Ignore, well, I've did some additional fun function here, so please ignore it. But uh, what's important here is, is that um, uh, um, I use this to design my road. By the way, I want to show you a trick, a nice trick. Let me do something. It's confusing. I, I, I did some additional thing here. Okay. So I want to show you a few things. First of all, I want to show you another nice trick. If, for example, this is my curve, let's stretch it. I will stretch it to here. Let's say this is my design. I want to show you a trick over here, for example. Sorry. Here. Me off the object snap. Yeah, here. Let's see it. Okay. This is my design. Now I want my curve to, to go through a specific point. So it means that the IP will remain the same, but the curve would be the length of the curve will be calculated automatic, so it will go through a specific point. I'm using this button here. You see it on here on the left, lower left point corner of the design center line, arc through point. First of all, I'm marking the curve itself. This is the curve, curve number four, right? This is 387.9 meter from the start, which is this one, 387.9. We see it the same. Then I click the button, and I tell the software where I want my curve, my curve to move through. Let me use object snap. And let's say from here. See what happened here. The 2T, the length of the curve change. So it will ensure that it goes through this point. I press escape and press apply. Then the drawing will be updated accordingly. I hope you got it. Again, I mark the, the line, the vertical curve, pick the point, for example, now I'm on this one, and said I want my curve to go through a specific point. Let's say this one, this one. Click the point. When the software calculates the 2T, the change, I press escape and press apply, then the curve automatically goes to this location we've just seen. I hope you got it. If not, it's just tricks, it's not a must. Let me go to my second road, because I change here. Since I change here, this one, I want to take it up to this point. Okay. So now the two roads are at the same level. Excellent. Excellent. Fine. I'm pressing close and I closed my window. Then
if I go to horizontal rows, horizontal alignment, and press apply again, and mark all this, the design that I did in the profile will be reflected here. You see, all the elevation from the fourth profile were projected here. See, 13.65 times, all the elevation along the center line are here. Also, I see the distance between the sections, the distance to the tangent, and so on so forth. And I see also see the peak point. Peak point is here. This is the peak point of the vertical curve. I hope you follow. Any questions about that before I'm going into cross sections? Any questions about that? Because I'm gonna go deep inside into cross sections. So just let me know if you have any questions now. Guys, ladies. Any questions? This is the time, don't be shy. No. If you know, even if you don't understand the word of what I'm explaining, let me know, I would re-explain. It's important. No questions. Okay, okay, fine. So, with the agenda that I showed you, I'm gonna start with cross sections. Roads, cross sections. See what happened. The entire environment changed. The entire environment changed. Just for your understanding, the drawing is here beneath. It's a new window. It's a new window, which I can always open from here. Okay, it's a different window. On the right, let's look at the window. The window is separated into four sections. This is the drawing section. This is the list of cross sections section. This is the lower left table. And this is the lower right table. So there are four sections, more or less. I will start. Okay, sorry, my mistake. Make sure. I will start. I will start. This is something that it's some practice which I did before you. We started, so ignore it. I will start by pressing the option button, this button on the right, with the hand. I'm pressing it. And what I'm gonna do here is to ensure that I'm working with something that's called DH. I'm working with something that I call DH and not elevation. What is the difference? What is the difference? DH, it means that the elevation for the design will be relatively to the profile. Again, what we are designing is according to our profile, according to our vertical alignment. While elevation is entering the elevation ground level as uh, absolute figures. So um, I think it was Doreen that asked me earlier if I'm calculating between two roads, which uh, uh, one, the design, I got it from someone else, just to calculate volumes, then I will use elevation. This time around, I'm the designer. I've already defined my profile. So I'm using DH and I will use a template to design my cross sections. So again, I'm pressing the option button, coming here and making sure that I'm using DH. If even if what I explained is not so clear, still you can just make sure, very, very important. First thing that you do, right, press the option and change here to do H and press okay. The next thing, the next thing is to design, the next thing is to design the list of sections, list of cross sections, you see on the right. 
it's empty. Now, the, the default was 25 meter. This is what we used. But now we are going into details. So I'm pressing here, define sections. And the system tells me, OK, which format? We are using format 2. You remember that format 2 is how the, the sections appears on the layout. Either it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0 plus 0, 0.25, and so on and so forth. We are starting from the beginning of the road. We are ended up by the end of the road. The software automatically calculates the length. The length is 534.13 meter. We, the distance between quad section is 25 meter. If I'm OK, I'm pressing OK here. Here it is. This is the list. All the cross sections, I see it here. I can flip between them by clicking on each one of them. For example, I click here, 0 plus 75. You can see on the top, it says 0 plus 0 0.25. And this is the elevation of the profile at 0 plus 75, so on and so forth. I will stand on the first section, very important. And then I want to get the existing ground level of all my sections. I'm pressing this button on the right. Get topo data for all sections. I'm clicking it. And here on the table, you say yes. And see what happened. The system went each 20, 25 meter. This is the center line. And create cross sections. 20 meter to the left, 20 meter to the right. On the lower left table, I will see the data. See. The system went on zero, minus 0 0.28 from the center line, which is somewhere here. It found a break. And this is the elevation. Next one, next one, next one, next one, until minus 20. I mean, till minus 20. In fact, if I take you to the layout, what the system did. This is the beginning of the road. It went to the left until it find the break somewhere here, 20 centimeter to the left, and digitize the elevation. Continue, continue, continue. Just to remind you, we are working with a surface here. So if I show you the triangles, the system will go until it will find the triangle and digitize the elevation in the triangle. So first of all, digitize the point here at zero, then the next break, 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 until it went to minus 20, minus 20 somewhere here, probably. I can measure, but it's not that important. So this is how this, and then the system went to the right and did the same, then goes to the next section and did the same, and so forth, so forth, so forth, so on, so forth. Just to, I, I, I ask the system to rec recreate the surface and now show us the triangle. So there are a lot of triangles here. We soon, soon see them. Um, so that's it. This is what we did here in the cross sections. Um, One second. See the triangles are being loaded. It's very heavy. A lot of triangles. Okay. These are the triangles. This is the surface. So if I go to triangles. Now you can see. What you see here that the system went from this cross section, you see this is the 20 cm. First of all, digitize this. After 20, remember, minus 20 cm, it found a break. Then another break here. Then another break here. Another break here and so on, until it reached 20 meters to the left. And then it did the same to the right. So the result is what we are seeing in the cross sections. The result is what we are seeing 
in the cross section. Again, system digitize the elevation at zero, then 28 centimeter to the left, digitize elevation, so on, so forth. And this is the drawing, this is the result. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's assume, for example, that I want to add another section, an intermediate section. I want to show you how agile is, it is. Here, between 0 0.25 and 0 0.50. Just for you to understand, 0 0.25, 0 0.50 is somewhere here. Here, somewhere I want to add the section. Let's say somewhere here. It's very simple. I'm going to the list, standing on 50, pressing enter in the keyboard, enter the name of the section. I will call it uh, 0 plus 0 37, for example. And it's on 37 meter from the beginning. And that's it. I have a new section. Now it's empty because it don't have the existing ground level of this section. So I'm pressing get T again. Wait a minute. And that's it. I have the existing ground level of this section as well. In fact, I'll do it quickly just to let you know it is now part of my layout. If I refresh the layout, you will see that it will be created here somewhere. 37, 37. Where is it? Here it is. This is the 37 which I've created. It's my decision. Why here? Because I, it's important for me to create a section here. The most important thing is that you understand that this table is very agile. You can change it to whatever you like with it. Okay, any questions so far? None. Any questions so far? Just stop me. If you raise hand, I don't see it, so just unmute and speak. No questions. Fine. So I have my cross sections. I have my cross sections. The next thing, I'm going to start designing. I'm changing the lower left corner from existing to structure. We'll practice later on. We'll send you, I already sent you the practice. Give you time. I'm going into structure. So here I have the structure layer and here I have the design. Design is also what we call earthworks calculation. The earthworks calculation and this is the top layer. I'm starting from the center and see how I walk. This is very important. I start from the center, always design. I'm, I will not use a pre-made template. I will create my own template now. So first of all, I'm creating it on section number zero. You see on the right, I'm on section number zero. This is section number zero. And I'm starting with the structure layer using designing my template. So I'm now on segment zero, offset zero, DH zero. Then let's say I want to create a two lane road to the left, two lane to the right. So let's say three and a half meter each lane, minus seven meter altogether. This is my first segment, minus seven meter to the left and pressing enter. I'm not entering the DH, so I move with my arrow and go to the slope. What I'm doing is doing here. And in the slope, I'm entering the slope. From the center, I'm going minus two and a half percent. And the software automatically cuts the elevation for me. So this is the first segment. The second, second segment is shoulders one and a half meter from the side of the asphalt. And again, it's minus two and a half percent. And the same, now I'm going to the right again, seven meter because it's to the right. And the slope is minus 2.5 because it's a camber. 1.5 meter, minus 2.5 for a camber. 
That's it. This is my template. Again, starting at zero, zero, which is the crown level, the center line level, going seven meter to the right and two and a half percent, one and a half meter additional, two and a half percent, then to the left, seven meter, two and a half, one and a half meter. Cover. Cover. I want to tell the software this minus one and plus one is the asphalt. So I'm clicking here. Asphalt. How do I do it? Go to the cover, go to this cell, double click it. Doing the same here. Click it, then double click, choosing asphalt. This is my template. Asphalt is the minus seven and the seven. Let's apply. This is what I've done. Seven meter to the left, two and a half percent. Asphalt, then additional one and a half meter for shoulder. This is my carriage way. I started here, zero, zero. This is the zero, zero point. The zero, zero point has been taken from the profile. And since I started almost at the ground level, it's almost at the ground level. Going to the right, doing the same, and that's it. But what I'm seeing here is not what I want because I want to open it at one to two. This is zero straight. How do I do it? I'm going here to the slope and I'm telling the software, if you are in cut like this situation, go and open the cut at one to two. If you are filling, since this is a template, this is not a filling situation because I'm below the ground, but if I was in filling, I want the system also to go go up one to two. And the same goes to the right side. Let's see the effect. Apply, here it is. This is one to two. Going, and this is the sticking ground point. This is the elevation. And the same goes here. So, this is how I define my section. Now I want to do the same. Oh, and this to session, God. Hey. Good morning, the one that is talking, please off your mic. The design ground level. Now I want to enter the elf walks. How do I do it? This is the zero zero point. I know that my total structure is 60 cm. So I'm starting at the zero point and I'm going 60 ZM below. So it's minus 0 0.6 because it's in meter. What I've I did went from here, 60 ZM. This is where I start my air forks. And my air forks, my design ground level are going the same like the structure. Seven meter to the right, minus two and a half percent. Sorry, minus two and a half. 1.5 meter, minus 2.5, minus seven to the left, minus 2.5, minus one and a half, minus 2.5. Actually, my structure is parallel. And closing the same, one to two, one to two. Of course, my air forks are the same like the structure, same slope. Let's see it, here it is, from this point. Seven meter, one and a half meter. This is my tall thickness, so this is how it closed. The same goes to the right. So this is my cross section. This is my cross sections, cross section. This is my template. Any questions so far? This yes, is I have a question, please. Yes, please, go ahead. Who is talking? Tamir. Tam Tamir or Amir? Tamir, Tamir. Yes, please go ahead. The blue line is the existing situation? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, obviously. The existing ground level is what we picked in the beginning. I pressed the get T, I got the existing ground level. 
Now remember that my profile, in my profile, I use object snap. So I hardly do excavation. I hardly, hardly do cut and fill. I'm starting exactly at the zero, zero point. It's what I've designed. If I want to show you something. Let me go to the profile. This is my profile, right? If I go to the beginning, you see, my design is exactly with the ground. If I take it up, let's say I take it up to this point, which is each like this is one meter. So I'm taking it a little bit more than one meter here. Okay, and I'm pressing apply. I change my design, okay? Right, now I'm in field, right? This is the ground, this is the design. I'm in field here, I'm filling here. Let me go to the cross sections. Okay, I didn't choose the entire template. What I didn't do is apply to update all. I do it again, apply, update all. I have to update the cross sections. Now it's also update the cross section, not just here. Let me see. No, it didn't. It didn't. Why didn't? Okay. I didn't use DH somehow. DH. It didn't. What it did, it took everything down. This is strange. I have to check. Why it happened. Let me fix it. Zero minus 60. Here it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now when I took my, this is the one plus something meter, which I took up. This is the one plus something meter, which I took up. So now this is my starting point. I'm above, I'm filling. So this is the top level, the road. This is the elf fox. This is the existing. Now the software automatically recognizes that I'm in field situation because this is this template, so it went by one to two for the thing. Same here. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? This is the guy, this is the time. Even if you, you feel this is a stupid question, I like stupid question. Because there's no such thing, stupid question. Yeah, I have a question. Please go ahead. Who is speaking? Uh, Engineer Lawal. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, uh, wow, I'm going to do the uh, structural component in layers. Okay, I understand that what you wanted to do is to create sub layers here. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's not something that I'm going to demonstrate now because it will take me completely off my training. But I can write myself that maybe I will do a short demonstration in the beginning of next. We'll not practice it, but I will try to show you something in the beginning of the next training, okay? So I'm, I'm writing to my SAP sub layers of the structure. So the question was how to take this structure and show it sub layers. There's a mechanism for that, but we'll not practice it today, but I'm writing it down to myself. Yes, next question, because it's, it will take me too long now. More questions? None. Guys, ladies, um, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm talking, sometimes I'm talking a lot, and I don't know if you understand or not, don't understand. It's very difficult to do training like this. I'm not complaining about myself, on the contrary, I'm complaining about you having to sit two hours and listen to me. But look, it's important that you ask questions. Because this is the only I way. I have a question. Please, who is Please? talking? I, I'm Darin. Um, yeah. The red line is the base course 
uh, I suppose, and the green line is the asphalt level? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, so uh, no, this is not the base. This is the sub. Sorry, this is the end of the subgrade, end of the earthworks. Subbase would be somewhere here. We don't show it. This is what Lawal asked. I can show the subbase as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Darin. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. So again. This is the subgrade, end of the air forks. We call it design. This is the end of the structure, the carriageway here. Subbase is probably 40 cm, I don't know. Depends on the structure of the road. More questions. In the option, explain the two closure, when to use them. Which of the two closure, you mean this this one, Rose, is this the question? Yes, okay. Rose doesn't like to speak, but Rose, but it's okay to write, there's no problem. The question was how to use this, what we call it, closed design to structure, closed design to existing. In fact, in our design, we will only use closed design to structure. Um, I can give you one example, what I'll do. Let me take this this template, see what I'm doing. Copy, what I'll do now, I will show you in a minute, Rose. I didn't forget, but you know what? Let me continue with my lesson and then, okay. You know what, I have a better idea. I'm going to the next section, 0 0.25 and paste it, I, what I did. I was first here, I use this copy, copy all to clipboard. It will copy all the design, the structure and the design. Go to 0 0.25 and press paste. Press apply. Okay. No, this is not what I want to enter into. Cut so I can show you what's the difference. No, we don't, I don't have a deep cut here. Everything is, I don't have a deep cut here. So I cannot show you. Okay, maybe here. Okay, Rose, to your question. This, you see, I'm in, shallow cut here, I'm cutting here. If I'm using close design to existing here, by the way, I can do it specifically to this section, I'm pressing here. This is specifically for a section and this is for the entire sections. I'm changing. If I'm using, so let me change it only here. Here and here and press apply. See what happened. The design, again, before, let me close it. I want to show you before. I want to show the difference. This is what it used before. It's a schematic thing. And anyhow, I'm gonna end up with a ditch here, but it's not so important now. What I want to show you now, let's assume this is my end. It's a schematic thing because at the end of the day, now it's a question. How do we do? Because look, this is the dibbling point, side stick. We are cutting here, we are opening the ground level. In this case, it's an existing road. We are cutting it. The existing road, I think, ends here, probably. From here to here. Yeah, this is the existing road, from here to here. I see it by the cross sections. And these are the air forks. And I'm entering here. And for here, I'm starting. So in fact, you know, when we do the construction, we will start here and there's no such thing, something like that. You know, no bulldozer can do that. So it's a question. Some people show it like this, or you can, if you use close to existing, either to this section or in the options, this is what you'll get. It means this is the open, you know, before it was like this and the dibbling point was here, the stick, side stick. Now the side stick has been open because what we are saying is that first of all, we'll cut like this and then we start paved and this is the actual pavement that I would do. What is correct, not correct, 
depends who you ask. This is why we have the two options. Some people like to show it like this. Some others like to show it like this. There's no right and wrong here. And I don't want to open the debate. Some will say this is the only way. The others say, no, this is not correct. You have the two options, choose. Did I answer the question, Rose? Yes, okay, thanks. So I prefer not to use cloud design to existing because this is my practice here, so I just use it here. So again, I can change it to a specific road or I can go into options, change it here, and then I change it completely. You'll choose. Fine. Now remember what I've, I, I, I did. I copy from here, went to a section and paste, and then press apply and saw the result. But this is not what I want because I have many sections here. So instead of going section by section, look what I'm doing. I'm copying from this first section, going to the last section and pasting here and press apply. This is the last section, right? This is the last section. And now I'm doing interpolation between the first section and the last section. How do I do it? I'm pressing this button, interpolate empty sections. What the system will do, it will now go scan all the sections. Each section, it will refresh it. And if it's empty, it will interpolate it. That's it, it's usually it's very fast. Yes, and uh, now I have all the sections. What the system did, it went between the first section to the last section, in this case, to the last section. And then 0 to 25, you have data. If you have data, it will just refresh it. If you don't have the data, it will do interpolation. Here it is. Now I have all the sections. I can go one by one and I have all the sections which I have. Do you have questions? Please, questions. Any questions so far? Guys, ladies, questions? None. So what I want to do now is to see the result in the layout, in the map. I'm pressing here, create layout. Here, I'm checking the layout, the contours, the distance, the triangles. What does it mean? Layout is to see the entire layout. Contours, if I want to see the design contour lines. And this is the interval which the system will create for the design contour lines. The distance is the distance between the sections, just to see it on the layout. The triangles, triangles is to create a surface out of the road, to create a surface out of the road. So later on, I can use this surface. I'm pressing, I'm updating only mass, I'm pressing OK. Let's see the, the result. Here it is. This is the result. See what happened. You know what? Let me off the triangles. We don't need it. Right? OK. This is the result. What do I see? Each section, I see the elevation and the center. So who is talking, please? This is the slope, side slope, two and a half percent each side. This is the asphalt. This is the shoulders. These are the elevations which I created. Okay? I hope you can get it. Um, it's a little bit confusing. You know what I'll do? The end of the road is here. Layout. I'll go to layout. You'll understand better. So many layout of road number one. Layout of road number one. You know what? Can even go much better. And instead of this, I'll do it uh, 
maybe yeah yellow is very see now it's better you can see this is the layout seven and a half meter each side and this is the one and a half meter shoulders by the way i think this is the edge of the former road on the right again this is seven and a half meter this is one and a half meter this is the edge of the former road it's here and these are the design contours you remember it starts with classic chamber and then we have a vertical curve and then it's continued like this and again a vertical curve and continue like this so this is my layout before we go into practice i want to show you something the nice thing about the software the nice thing about the software is that i can deal specifically with sections first of all you see that even the intermediate section which i've created got all the information let's us you see the the curve it's starting here there's a small curve starting from here we visit a tangent point starts from here and end up here i want for example this is you remember this is seven and a half meter i want to take it and add one meter one and a half meter wider these two lanes on the right take it one and a half meter wider when i enter the curves Actually, I want to start it from this section, 0, 100, and end up in 0, 225. So, so from 0, 100 to 0, 225, I want the right side to be wider by one and a half meter. Let me go to the cross sections. And I'm going to section 100. This is 100. I'm going to the structure. This is seven meter. I'm changing it now to 8.5 meter. 8.5 meter. And since the slope side change, I'm retyping minus 2.5. Retain the same slope. Good. And of course, I have to do the same here for the earthworks. Here it is. You see what happened? This came 8.5 meter. This remains seven to the right. I made it wider, 8.5 meter. I changed it, not actually the template. I changed section 100. The rest have not changed. How can I project it from 100 to, we said 225 to here? until here. I have two options. I can copy and go one by one and paste. This is one option. I can do it faster. How do I do it? I'm going to the segment which I change. This is segment one. I'm standing on it, left click. Then I'm using right click at the mouse. It asks me send to. And I tell the software, send it to all the section from here to here with shift. And this segment now have been sent to all the section that I've marked and I have to do the same here. So I'm going here, one, left click, right click, send to. Zero plus one, two, five, two, 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 five, okay? And to ensure that changes are being affected, I interpolate all. Because interpolate, do interpolation, but also refresh all my sections. Here it is, that's it. Let's see, this have not changed, right? This is seven meter, see here, seven meter, seven meter, seven meter, seven meter, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, so on, so forth. And to five, go back to seven meter. I want to see the effect on the layout, I'm clicking here.
Here it is, wider. So we started here, you remember, until 100 is what, seven and a half meters? You see there's interpolation between here and here. You see it went getting wider. Here it's seven meter, this is 8.5. It's 8.5, 8.5, then 0.5, go back to seven and a half. I hope you got it. The main thing that I wanted to show you is that each section here is individual. You can deal on a specific use case by section. What I'm gonna ask you now, I send you a practice. Use this practice to practice what we have done. Take 20 minutes, practice. If you have questions, I'm here. If you have questions, just let me know. I will be more than happy to assist. So take your time, take 20 minutes practice. You encounter problems, let, let me know. Let's share screens and see it together. All right, take your time. The practice are here. If someone doesn't have the practice, take it from the chat. If you don't have it, I can resend it in the chat. Any questions? No question. Go ahead, practice, please. Use the practice. I will send you a paper, practice it.
Hello, sir. Yes, please. I didn't see it in my in my in the chat. Rose, please can you send it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at the chat now. Oh. Thank you, sir. I've seen it. Okay. Please, if I add an uh, additional in, uh, section by mistake, how can I delete it? Sorry, if I have what? I entered uh, yes. two cross sections, a new two cross sections by mistake. I want to delete one. Yeah, there's no problem. Can you show the screen? I will show you how. Okay. One second. What was the problem? Ah, on the right. Yeah. Um, you have the eraser below. Go below. Yeah, yeah. this one. Yes. Okay. Click. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Someone, uh, please off your uh, off your mic. Okay.
I hope you are doing well. If you have questions, I'm here. Yes, uh, hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, I want to ask on artworks calculation. Yes. Uh, uh, when I know by cross section, but I want to ask by plan. Say you want to, you have a spot, you have some spot uh, heights. Uh, either for, uh, either in coaching or for field, you have points before and points after work. And you want to calculate the volume of artworks. Uh, uh, can you demonstrate the procedure? Um, it's not part of the agenda, but I've written to myself, you know what I'll do when we finish this meeting, okay. the one that want to stay, I will do a short demonstration. Okay. okay. Meanwhile, how is the practice? Yeah, it's going well. I hope you are practicing what we're doing. Yeah, but I have issue. I'm yet to sort out with uh, Marina. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, ladies, let's uh, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue with our meeting. Okay, I hope all of you succeeded to practice. I'm sharing my screen again. One second. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Can you see the screen? Uh, Gal, can you see the screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, we can see. Meanwhile, while you were practicing, I did something else. What I did, I took one of the brake line, the brake line which was here. And since this is the road edge, I created a new layer in AutoCAD. I call it existing road. You can see it. And I changed this polyline 
to mark for me where is the existing road. So this is the existing road and this is what the rest is what we are doing. Now I want to project this existing road on my cross sections. So I'm going to cross sections. And I want to see the, the, the road here. What I'm doing, I'm clicking here on a button name, get reference by layer. I click on it. The system asks me which layer. So I press select and I select the layer. Existing road and I press okay. What the system will do now, it will scan this layer. Okay, it was very fast. And all the cross section which intersect with this leg will be interpolated. See what happened. You see what happened? <coughs> the system scan existing layer. The, I call it existing road layer. And, in, in, and convert it into offsets and distance from the center line. So I can actually show on the road the existing, I can see it. The existing road. Sorry, sir. Yes, please. Hello, sir. Please, can you just repeat, please? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Who, who asked me to repeat? It's Rose, sir. Rose. Yes, yes sir. You remember, we talked about that this is an existing road which we are rehabilitating or make it wider or whatever. <laughs> and the yellow lines are the lines in AutoCAD. This is regular AutoCAD that mark the borders, the mark the existing road. This is the existing road. This and this, you see the thick yellow lines. How did I get them? I just used the, I went to do break lines. You see, this is a break line. For example, let me show you. This is a break line here. I change it to a layer which I've created in before. I just created it in AutoCAD. Here it is. Okay, so this is what I've been done here. Why I've done it? Because I want to see the asphalt of the existing road and to project it on the cross sections. After doing this, I went to do my cross sections. And in my cross sections, what I've done, it's not so important on which section I'm doing, I pressed this button. Get reference by layer. I click on it. The system asks me, which layer are you referring to? I can select it from the list. Or I can press select and just select it here on the drawing. One of the polyline, it's not so important, just to identify the layer. Here it is, existing road. If I press OK here, now the system will go along the road and for each cross section, when the cross section intersect with this layer, the system will automatically translate it into offsets. And the result is what we see here. For example, this one. These are the borders of the existing road. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, so on and so forth. Did you got it, Rose? Rose? Sam, okay, thank you. All right. More questions about what I did? None. Okay, if you are writing, I cannot see you now, so you have to speak up. Good. Now, I want to create a side ditch here. To create side ditches along for the drainage. For example, here. How do I do it? I'm going to the lower left uh, table and change it into left ditch.
I'm going to the right side table and change it into right ditch. So I have left ditch and I have right ditch. Left side, right side. In the left side, I'm standing by defining the ditch. This is the table. So I'm telling to myself, first of all, the depth. I'm telling you something. If you're in cut, this is fill. So let's start in fill. In fill, from the side stick, you see it says, from the side stick, from here, I want you to create a ditch in the depth of 0 0.6 meter. If you are in cut, do the same. If you are in cut, do the same. The ditch size will be the left embankment of the ditch will be at slope of one to two. The right embankment of the ditch will be also one to two. And the bottom width, it will be a trapezic ditch with 0 0.5 meter width. Here it is. This is the ditch, one to two, 0 0.5, one to two. And the depth, 60 meter. I hope you got it. Questions? Questions? Uh, Akim, Akim, did you got it? Akim, did you get it? Akim is not here. Um, Tamir, is it okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. So this is the definition. Now, I can copy this data and paste it to all the sections, but I don't want to do it. So I'm using the same style that we used before. How do I do it? I'm going here to this cell. Right click. It will give me a pop-up which I will ignore. Then it will say, send the whole ditch to other sections? Yes. To which section? All. That's it. It was sent. Let's interpolate to make sure that everything is refreshed. That's it. Zero, 35, 37. See here, I'm in cut. See here? I'm in cut. So the 0 0.6 starts from here. This is 0 0.6 from this point. This is 0 0.6. Right? So in cut, it will use this information. Now, someone might ask, I'm, I'm trying to show you situation. It's not easy. Okay, yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh, this one is also. E, not this one. Maybe this one. Yeah, okay. I'm looking because what is the difference between this and this? This says from here go 60 cm. But sometimes, and because this is cut, but sometimes because of the ground level surface or because of the structure that goes up, which is at the edge of cut and field here. Even from here to here, it's less than 60 cm. So this is this one. This tell the software that even if from the edge in cut to the bottom, it's not 60 cm, you always secure the 60 cm from the ground level. So if it was a little bit higher, let's say here, and from here it goes 60 cm, 
but when it's not 60 cm, then the software will automatically take it down so we to secure the 60 cm depth. I hope it's clear. I don't have a sample here. I, I need to have a specific to show you, but this is why automatically it goes to say, to, to say that in, in these um, special occasions, the system will always protect 60 cm. You can cancel it, but always protect the 60 cm depth. Now I'll do the same to the right. So let me stand on the first section. And again, two, two, button, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 meter, 0 0.6 meter. Here it is. And again, left click here right click with the mouse ignore this message send the whole ditch yes all and interpolate to rebuild to refresh all the sections here it is all the sections are now there Obviously, if I want to see the ditch on the layout, just press the layout button. Here it is. Now we can see the entire, yeah, what happened here? I have, probably I have an empty section. Which section is it? I'll check later on. I'm seventy five. Seventy five. Say seventy five. Seventy five is ah, I didn't do something. I removed it when I practiced earlier. So it's my bad. How to fix it? Take care. Zero plus zero seventy five. Okay, I practiced the delete when I showed to Darin yesterday. Eh, not yesterday, two minutes ago. Okay, seventy five. Get data. And I don't even need to interpolate it since it's only one section. I copy from here to 75, paste, apply. Here is 75. Let's see the layout. Perfect. Okay, so I've done my entire road. This is the left ditch. This is the right ditch, right? There's no ditch here, probably we're in minimum level. Ah, there is a ditch here, it's just too shallow. So it doesn't show the stop. It continues like this. Okay, good. But now I want to show you something. See, the profile starts like this, right? It goes this direction. You see the water, let's see the water flow. It goes, some water are flowing here, go to the junction, so we are culvert somewhere here. And some, I'm going down here all along. Okay, here, I need to create some kind of a culvert as well. But let's assume I want to the ditch to continue this side up till here. 
see it's going here from here and it's going all the way. So in short, I want to change the ditch depth, invert level, go all the way. The hard way to do it is go to the cross section and start changing the depth of the left side ditch at each section, right? We are talking about from here, from zero plus two to five. So I can go to zero two to five and change it specifically. But I have a better method. I'm closing and I'm going into the vertical alignment. Since I have a ditch, the software automatically creates two layers. I open, you can see them. These layers. One is the left ditch and one is the right ditch. You can see it. I'm talking about the left ditch. You know what? I'm talking about the left, left ditch is yellow. Okay, you can, okay, what I did, I did practice before I walk with you, so I already changed the profile, but let's see. I go to the left ditch, the one that I want to change. Okay, this is the left ditch. This is the data of the left ditch. Before I change it. This is my left ditch. It's under the green. And we said from here, here, I want to go all the way, instead of going up like we saw. Okay, usually I would do a culvert here, but just for the demonstration I will do from here going a small slope that goes all the way up to here. Uh, it's not practical, a lot of cut would be here, but just for example. What I'm gonna do, see what I'm doing. I'm changing here from the center line, which where I used to be, which is the table, which I see here, to ditch left. So see what happened. The ditch left table is shown here. See the ditch step? Ditch step, ditch left table, it shows here. These are the data. This is the data of the invert level at each 25, at each of my sections. Now what I'm doing, I want from here, from this point. This point is two to, which section is it? Two to five. From here, 225. From here, I want to go by a shallow slope until the end. So I'm going to two to five, where is it? This is two to five. This is the last one. All this going for what 250, 275, 30, 32, 32, I don't need them. So what I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm standing on the serial number on 12 and hitting the delete in my keyboard. Just deleting the segments one by one. Just click delete, I delete all of them. I just deleted the segments. And now I create only one segment at the end end of the road. How do I know the end of the road? I can see it here. 5.3.4.141, three, it says here. 5.3.4.141. Either I know the invert level, if no, I can just add the slope. Go by 0.2%, very cheap, most of. This is the elevation at the end. Press apply and update all. Okay, to see this, okay, you can see it here. See it? Here it is. This is the new ditch. If you want to see the entire drawing change, I can just close 
and go back to the profile. And then it will even refresh the, the ditch itself. Here it is, yellow. See, this is the ditch which I created on this point. I remember this is the right ditch. I didn't deal with it. I only changed the left ditch. I changed the left ditch. I cleaned all the segments here and just create a segment here and here. Already, when I enter again, if I go to ditch left, you see with, this, with, with the system. Oh, stop. Guys, the one with the mic is off it. Someone is making a lot of noise. Okay. So each 25 meter, now the software automatically calculates each 25 meter, calculated for me. If I go now to the cross sections, If I go to the cross sections and look at those, you remember it's from 25, it's not here, 25 is here. See what's happened to the ditch. You see, it's getting deeper and deeper. You see the ditch? Yeah, the problem is that I don't have enough existing ground level. So what I'll do, go to options, tell the software, cut the ground level minus 50 meters to the left instead of 20. And again, get existing. And interpolator to rebuild the sections. Here it is. See? 350, 375. 400, 25, 50, okay. What the ditch? Actually, if I go to the left, di left ditch here, you see that the depth was automatically changed from the profile, it was cut from the profile. So if I will refresh my layout, okay, I did this small mistake here. I have to rectify between 225 to 250, but the rest is okay, see? up till this point. Questions? Questions? Okay, take, let's say, 10 minutes to practice, practice, second practice, and then we'll continue to show you some few more things and then we close the session. Take 10 minutes exactly to try and practice the side ditch things which I did. Please, please go ahead, take your time. Thank you, take 10 minutes to practice. Practice two, we are on practice two.
Okay. Okay, we don't have much time, so I want to achieve some more things. Um, what I'll do now, let me save the project. What I'll do now is I will, um, first of all, calculate the volumes, earthworks along this road. So it's very simple. All of you, please listen up. We don't have much longer, so please listen up. I'm going to roads, earthworks here. In the window on the right, I press apply. I'm getting the volumes cut and fill for each cross section and the total accumulative, I'm getting it here. I can print it or export to Excel. If I have stripping, if I'm stripping the top soil, I can click kick strip by, let's say 15 cm. In this case, the road also. And I apply. Sorry, and I have to press include. Okay. So the top, total software took 15 cm in fill and 60 cm in cut and remove it for my volumes. And here show me the total stripping area. The total stripping area. If I want just to show the ditches without to exclude the ditches from the road, to be calculated separately. This will be the road. This is the stripping. And this is the ditches. These are the ditches volume separately. I hope you got it. So it's very simple. Just road, horizontal line, or roads, air fox, apply when I have with stripping. With ditches or exclude the ditches. What else? Now, I want to take you out of this. You know what? Let's continue this one, and then later on I will show one one example which was I was asked about. What I want to do now is to divide this drawing into frames for printouts. So please listen carefully. We are using something that we call Frame Maker. It is a designated module. So please listen carefully. How do I do it? I'm going to General Frames Maker. Move all. Okay. And here, first of all, I'm pressing options to define the page size. Page size in my case, I choose A0. You can choose whatever you want, A3, A0, no division at all. A0. And the second one is which scale I want to print. I said one to 200, 250, one to 250. You can change it to one to 500, whatever. I press okay. The next thing that I'm doing, I'm clicking this button, locate frame on drawing. Coming to the drawing, selecting the lower left corner. This is, 
This is my frame, post frame. I will move it a little bit from here. This is my first frame. The second frame, I'm using copy from here. This is the overlap. And the last one is this one. I have three frames for this road. I organize them. But they are not frame yet. They are just polygons. So I'm going here, frames maker, select the first, you see it says frame number one. This one, I call it frame number one. I select it and press enter. I'm pressing the new button which sits here. Select, select the second frame. Pressing the new button sitting here, select. That's. So I have one, two, three frames. And I'm pressing apply. Pressing OK and waiting. Here it is. One, two, three. It's ready. I can off the frame. Actually, which there is it? This is unused. Let's finish it. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's a coin clear. Let's see what the coin clear. Okay. This is the one. What else? I'm, ah, I see the software created some garbage here. I have to remove it. Yes. Ah, I was in outside of the space. Okay. Yeah, each section has the frames itself. Uh, this is P frame. Let's make it. Okay, now it's better. So this is what I want to print. What do I do to print? Print or plot, whatever. And then my paper, first of all, my printer, I will print it to PDF. I'm using a software named Bullzip. I recommend you to download it, it's free. And choose a zero. And the one that I want to select, this one, I want to print this one. From this point to this point, sorry. Good, let's pre preview. Here it is. This is the one for 250, which I'm gonna print. Uh, by the way, very important on printing. ZW CAD or ZW CAD Civil or Civil CAD has two methods. If you go to File Configuration, and you go to Drawing Environment, there are two methods. You see, use AutoCAD or AutoCAD Paper Space with scale one to one. Use AutoCAD Paper Space with custom scale. 
By the way, the default is the second one. I change it to one to one. This is specifically for this thing. If I'm using one to one, when I'm going to print from here, like I did, after selecting and everything, I don't need to do anything on the scale. It's, it remains one to one. If I'm using the second option, this option, I have to recreate. Let's go to model. Not live. Now it will recreate, but not at one to one, but at true scales. Okay, if now I want to print, again, I'm using the second method now. Oh, I didn't save, okay, yeah. So let's choose again, bull zip, zero, a zero, this is what I choose. And I have the window, let me print the last one, this one. Okay, now in this case, since I'm using two scale, I have to enter here one and my scale is one to 200. So I'm entering one to 250. And I'll get the same results. So these are two different met methods. It's also important, you can use whichever you want. Uh, okay, yeah, I, can, I can create my PDF. On the desktop, let's say it on the desktop. Okay, here it is. This is my PDF created. Mm. Uh, it is deeper color for this. See, the colors are very bright. Okay, I'll do it later on. Any questions? Anyone? Questions? Any question about this issue of Frames Maker? This is the time. Any question about this tool of Frames Maker? So the one last thing that I want to say about the Frame Maker that it, you can even rotate it. For example, if I want to change this one, and rotate it a little bit. Sorry, rotate, right? What's the problem? Base point is, let's do it from here. Okay. And I want to rotate it like this and move it from here, here. And this is the second one. So I'm select going to the second frame in the list, select and select with second frame. If I will apply now, let's see what happened to the second frame. See, it aligned according to my baseline. So in fact, let me show you one second. LA, uh, yeah. you can see it here, D frame. Okay, it aligned accordingly. Uh, 
and the north is now this direction. Yeah. Any questions about what you just saw? No questions. No questions. Okay, okay. Before we are closing the session for today, uh, I was, I, I, someone asked me a question. Someone asked me, can you demonstrate chart if I have two survey? One, I don't know who asked this question. If I ground before and ground after, which I survey. Let me try to do something. For example, I create a new project. I will do it very fast. It's not part of the program. I finished the lesson for today, but if you want to stay and learn, I'll do it very fast. I'll open a new folder, I'll call it um, a surface, this surface. Two surfaces, each other. And S, V, S. It's a new project. And I'm loading the existing, or well, I have to look for something. I have, I think in samples, I have something like that. Uh, let me go to samples. Documents. And maybe this one. So, first of all, I have the existing ground level. Mm, I don't think this is the one. This is a big one. Let me try again. Maybe in that folks one. Yeah, this is a small one. Yeah, I think this is a good one. So I have 168 points, which I surveyed, which is the existing ground level. And I create contours. So I go here, create contours, which also create the surface. 0 0.5, maximum interpolation, 60 meter. Here it is. And now I'm going to design coordinates. And here I'm loading points which I surveyed after they did the excavations here, cut and fill. So F rocks, I'm reading again another file here. Here it is. So one was loaded into topography and the second one to the design. You see the white, white is the design. Existing is this, uh, these points, are these points. Like I did topography contours, now I'm going to design contours. And I'm entering again 0 0.5, like I did in the existing. And same 16 for maximum interpolation length. I'm going to press a apply. Okay, these are the contour in the new contour life. Actually, let me sh see, let me show the borders. Okay. Um, if you want, I can show you the triangle, the area which was covered. Okay. Uh, it's 60. Let's give it. 60 was not enough here. This is the area which was covered. So there are some design contours here. Probably this is a flat surface here. We did a flat surface here, flat surface here. Actually, let me show you something. I can use design section, pick from here to here so you can understand. This is what we are seeing, okay? This is more or less flat, so I don't see contours. This is more or less flat, and this is the slope. So I have two surfaces, 
Now, how do I calculate the volume between them? Go to FOX, general, apply. And I see, cut is this, fill is this. Cut and fill volume appears here. If I want, I can even tell the software, divide it into a grid of five by five meter. and get each square cut and fill volume and the accumulative at the end. Okay, so these are the cut and fill of each one. If it's too big, we go to options, go into volumes here, at the font size, adjust it to this scale, 150 and apply. So we have to show them to affect something. Okay. Here it is, now it's much better. Each corner I see the end, the existing, the design or to, as made, the existing and the difference and so on. Of course, it's on different layers. I can give it colors and so on. Uh, I hope you got it, although I did it quite fast, but uh, it's not part of the training, but since it was raised, this is a way to, to do it. Uh, guys, ladies, we are finishing today. Um, now for next week, 